I've been made aware of some frankly stupid opinions from you and Waz on the Star Wars films, and I think it's time I put the record straight with my objectively correct opinions through a tier list. Okay, starting with The Phantom Menace. Despite what Outlanders may tell you, The Phantom Menace isn't actually that bad. Yeah, Jar Jar sucks, but it's actually the prequel film with the best story structure. I know that's like saying it's the Nord with the highest IQ, but still. The pod race was a fantastic feat of technology for its time. And the duel of the fates? John Williams' score is masterful, and when you realize how it's really a deeper fight for who will get to train Anakin, the wiser, more unorthodox Qui-Gon or the younger, inexperienced Obi-Wan, then the duel truly does earn its name. Then again, Qui-Gon liberating Anakin from slavery sends the wrong message to the beast races, so I can't be too generous. B-tier. Next, Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones is a colossal pile of guar droppings. The fact that actual human beings allowed its dialogue to make it onto the screen is all the proof I need that humans deserve every war crime I will inflict upon them. The final battle is a soulless spectacle that reduces the legendary Jedi to generic action heroes mowed down in the hundreds by filthy bugs and mindless battle droids. Most of it is genuinely painful to watch, and the rest is only enjoyable if you switch your brain off, but that's pretty much impossible for a god like me. It only gets D-tier because of Padme's mid-riff, Azura blessed George Lucas's costume choices. Now for Revenge of the Sith. Is there any great work that deserves the label of flawed masterpiece quite like this one? A sweeping yet tragic tale made all the more painful by our knowledge of how it will end. The first act has its flaws, and it wouldn't be a prequel film without some poor dialogue, but the rest truly is phenomenal. Anakin's journey speaks to me on a spiritual level. Just as Anakin was left to burn in the lava of Mustafar, so I was forgotten in the fiery bowels of Red Mountain. And just as Anakin returned to inflict genocide from behind a mask, so too have I returned to purify my home from all beasts, humans, and atheists. I can only put it in S tier. I debated over including the anthology films here, but I suppose I could do them quickly. Solo is an entirely unremarkable film. The droid character with her anti-slavery agenda and sexual degeneracy reminds me too much of the typical House Hlalu liberal, but she dies, so I suppose it balances out. The film doesn't really make me feel anything, but when it comes to art, being unable to inspire any emotions may be the greatest failure possible. C-tier. Rogue One, on the other hand, is a wonderful film and exactly what a Star Wars tie-in should be. It tells its own story with original characters and still manages to enhance the story of the films in a meaningful way. Solid A-tier. A New Hope is an S-tier film, no doubt about it. Its themes and structures recall timeless myths that explain why it's still so beloved to this day. Every character, every line, every frame is iconic. Better yet, once they leave Tatooine, that hive of scum and diversity, the galaxy is entirely racially homogeneous, save for Chewie, I suppose, but he's basically Han's slave, so I'll let it pass. This is the sort of inspiring vision of the future that I would gladly raise Morrowind's future generations on. Like I said, S-tier. Empire Strikes Back is pretty much the perfect movie. I don't even think people debate that anymore. Like its predecessor, every moment is iconic. It teaches essential life lessons that even Enwaz can appreciate, like placing the spiritual above the physical, being willing to sacrifice for those you love, and never to trust a red guard. Not to mention that the I am your father scene is probably the best plot twist in cinema history. Truly S-tier. Return of the Jedi. Ah, Return of the Jedi. I can take or leave the Jabba's palace stuff. I'm not sure what to think of Endor. On one hand, Seeing the natives drive out the mongrel dogs of the Empire is inspiring. Then again, I feel an instinctual surge of glee at seeing those furry savages being gunned down by superior firepower, like a slave rebellion on a Telvanni plantation. Besides, in my opinion, the final confrontation between Luke and Vader is even better than the one in Empire and is truly a worthy climax to the Skywalker story. I'll give it an A-tier. Now, I know what it is like to have the things you love seized and defiled by soulless outsiders. What Disney did to the Star Wars franchise is not unlike what the Empire did to Morrowind. They took a truly magical, beloved, and storied world and destroyed it through greed, women's rights, and representation for the slave races. 
but I am a merciful God, so I'll try my best to give these a fair shake. The Force Awakens is okay. It's lazy and formulaic, but even an Argonian could write an acceptable story if it copied a new hope as much as this does. I'll admit to being intrigued by the question of Rey's parents and the origins of Snoke, and leaving aside what the later films did, I think Force Awakens did an adequate job setting them up. Then again, I can never ignore the fact that J.J. didn't have a plan for any of those questions, and it leaves me feeling a little insulted. The Force Awakens is a lot like a Bosmer. It is a flawed reflection of the beauty seen in its ancestors, and if you don't look too closely, you can let yourself think it's acceptable. As long as you don't pay attention to how it has cannibalized everything around it. I'll probably put it in C tier for now. Look, I know whatever I say about The Last Jedi is going to start a shitstorm in the comments, so I'm just going to come out and say that I don't care about your dog shit Enwa opinions. The Last Jedi isn't the worst Star Wars film, but it's not the best either. Canto Bite is a pointless diversion, the Resistance Fleet storyline makes no sense, and Holdo is the sort of person who can turn even the most cucked human lover into a based and red mountain pilled genocide enjoyer. That being said, I actually enjoy the version of Luke we got. Even if the explanation for how he got that way is about as believable as the Tribunal's claims that they didn't kill Nerevar. I think we're all in agreement that the scene where Kylo kills Snoke is good, and the final scene with Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher is enough to bring a tear to my divine eyes. I was torn between B tier and C tier, but I'll put it in B just to savor the salty tears in the comments. Finally, we have the rise of Skywalker. I truly believe there is no greater argument for the extermination of all human races than the existence of this film. An insulting, disrespectful, cobbled together mess of a movie that can't even scrape together an explanation for the resurrection of Palpatine. It takes the victory earned at the end of the original trilogy and completely dismantles it before offering a hollow imitation of the same plot point that fails to match even a fraction of the quality or enjoyability that George Lucas achieved decades earlier. It is the epitome of Disney's defilement of the franchise. I've seen people point out how it brings together stuff from other parts of the franchise in the final battle, like having the ghost from Rebels or Ahsoka showing up in the voices, but it only makes me weep that these symbols from infinitely better stories were exposed to the cancerous tumor that is the rise of Skywalker. And a piece of me is glad that Leia only appeared in cut old Force Awakens footage so that J.J. couldn't treat her with the same level of sickening contempt that he treated his audience with. I genuinely hate this movie with every fiber of my divine being. When I have achieved Chim, I will alter the currents of space and time just to erase the two hours of my life this movie stole from me. I would rather drink the skooma-tainted piss directly expelled from my filthiest Khajiit slaves than subject myself to watching this abomination. It is a movie completely devoid of soul or creativity, and finding something in it worth enjoying is as rare as finding a red guard with a father figure. F-tier for fucking kill yourself.